I began as a music video director in my early teens. I went through a phase with drugs that had me incapacitated for a while. I came back to direct music videos again and my reel was dated by like two years. No one really was interested because I had like early hip hop and, and some stuff. I went out with a still camera because I wasn't working and I shot, um, I kind of started with street gangs because that's, you know, where I was getting drugs from and I documented them and then I went on uh, Lollapalooza and started documenting bands and crowds. I cut it all together with the idea of getting back to music video, which I did. I actually did a presentation that got me back to directing video. But along the way I realized that um, while I was doing videos again that I liked stills a lot and I kind of uh, made a plan to get back into it in a serious capacity and that's kind of, that's kind of how it started. It started documentary and then it added the light that I learned from commercial and video and then it became kind of where it's, where it's been going. My dad won it in a, uh, in a wine selling contest. He won a Canon AE1 back in like, I don't know, 80 and he gave it to me and uh, I didn't use it forever, I just had it. And then when photography, when I went to document these gangs and stuff, I happened to have a Canon AE-1, and that's what I used. I used to use a Canon AE-1 with Tri-X, and that was the beginnings. Always shooting in the shadows. I always stayed out of the hard light because it was like a lo-fi studio, so to speak. I'm liking what I'm hearing about the new 5D because it shoots high def and, and um, I make film, so it's an interest to me. I like it. I want to try it out. I always get cannons. I always go get them refurbished after the, after the hoopla um, <laughs> because they have good warranties and they're half the price. So I'm one of those bargain guys that won't go get the latest tech the day it's released because I feel like a sucker. So you could compare this to Paul on the website, that to Adrian in the black and white, you know, and vice versa, Eastwood to the cover. You know, that's what those are. Polaroid is, uh, I don't know, it just has its own mistakes and it has its own beauty. And uh, I always tend to shoot Polaroid as much as uh, every shoot, I always shoot a few Polaroids, uh, whether it be with a a really good land camera or uh, you know the pop-up uh, the pop-up Polaroid I think it's a 690 we shoot that sometimes with like 600 speed just having fun and, and actually after all that it's become quite a body of Polaroids and I always like it it's always so different than you know the other stuff it has its own life It was being on the internet really late at night and stumbling into a uh, website that was just strictly images. And I liked something about it. And then I was looking at the guy's uh, website and he, he wrote, this is the best blog ever created. You need not look further. It was super cocky and super um, pompous. And I thought it was funny. So what I did is I took screen grabs of these images and I quickly put together a logo and said, Pilford Magazine coming soon and sent this blog, uh, this, this, uh, this creation that was meant to be a joke. That week uh, I had uh, dinner with somebody that was, um, somebody that was good in the, the whole internet revolution and they said, Do you, you're doing Pilford Magazine. And I just, um, I just said, yeah, um, just to see where that was going. And he said, it's a really good concept, and I really like the idea. So it came from a joke. It would be interesting to see like almost a Wikipedia of visual images to uh, kind of create a place where all these images that came to us and were coming around and 
could go, a place could go. I like the idea of something that wouldn't have to be printed or into the normal situation of, of current publishing. I thought it was, it was a current and relevant idea. People like art buyers from different art agencies and, and different clients of ours actually check it out and they comment and they guest edit and they, they're actually seeing this. So sometimes it's neat that somebody will submit a photograph that's not necessarily in this trade and it gets a lot of recognition. And one day we hope that it will actually either get them a sale with the image or another shoot assignment with these people that are, that are interested in the work. It's like a modern online gallery for the new artist, as well as the old. Some of it is, is people take screen grabs of images that inspire or images that they think are relevant, and they submit those along with uh, original submissions. It's almost like a, a world contributing to a visual Wikipedia is the best way to probably say what its hope is. Where we're doing pitches or uh, designs and we're looking at like a thousand websites for different pictures and different stuff like that. Hopefully it'll one day become a place too that's easier to, to access visuals. Just go find the visuals you wanted for a particular pitch or a story or an idea or inspiration. It will give the newcomer um, a, 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 an audience that they necessarily didn't have with Flickr or some sort of like just putting it on their blog, you know. It's kind of developing as it goes. It's figuring out what it is as it goes. And, and I think I said this, which is the best thing I've done with Pilford is to stay out of the way, kind of pick guest editors, but to let it evolve and let the feedback and kind of it shape itself. We have all these great ideas, but at the end of the day, some of the ideas that are just, they just kind of organically happen with Pilford. And I think it should stay in that light where the people are voting for the covers and eventually voting for the guest editors and, and shaping it. I want the involvement. I don't want to be the leader of anything. I guess the, the, the bottom line is, is to stay true to whatever the vision you have is. Instead of kind of sampling the themes that we've seen today, which are, you know, somebody, somebody else's thing, so to speak. I think if you want to really do this, just be true to whatever you're, you're, you're vibrating towards, whatever you, you know, inspires you as opposed to being a follower of, you know, mainstream visuals. I recently did my first feature film. We sold it in, in Europe and now we're doing an American sale, pushing and fighting to get a release so it could get out there. So really campaigning uh, Mercy, my first feature film, and also uh, finishing a book I've been working on for five and a half years, which is a series of short stories uh, and, and pictures. Uh, it's a series of women and short stories that I've been putting together. That's pretty much next one, and also developing another film to get started with, hopefully by the end of this year.